there's this sense of hope and energy and forward motion and development and the need to kind of keep pace and transform Rwanda into a modern country. And that's everywhere. It's from kind of every, all the school children who are in school all the way up through the kids who are um, in engineering schools, through all the levels of government. Everybody's kind of on board when you ask. Even in the countryside when we talk to people who are working on our sites like Masons and things like that, they're all like, you know, very excited about how quickly things are changing in Rwanda. It's a country with a vision and uh, because Rwanda now we, we do not have so many uh, mineral resources and uh, we are now trying to be developing like uh, human resources. Unfortunately, Rwanda most of the time is associated with the genocide, the events of 94. This was 18 years ago, and uh, today it's quite different, and it's a marvelous place again. It's a place where uh, people uh, are not forgetting what happened, which is good, and they're really pushing forward. Indeed, uh, we can say that Rwanda has been achieving a great result. Uh, it's really progressing very well in terms of reduction of maternal mortality. But despite this, we can say that uh, the maternal mortality still remains an issue in Rwanda because, in fact, it's quite uh, high according to the standard values in the region. 300 women die every year because of the complication of pregnancy or the delivery. And we know that the 75% of this uh, is preventable. Again, ev every year 13,000 infants die in the first month and uh, almost 30,000 die before the first birthday. And again, half of this uh, uh, death can be prevented. So, since 2008, the Ministry of Health and UNICEF have been focusing on uh, improving the, the situation in the Nyanza district and they were also trying to improve the situation of the Nyanza hospital. The Maternity Pavilion is a building that dates 1931 and is uh, quite in bad condition, very dark, it's crowded, old, uh, it's not a place where uh, I believe any mother would uh, go to deliver. Just because it's in a resource constrained place or context doesn't mean that they also don't deserve all the things that come along with an extremely well designed building. And so I think our goal is to bridge that gap and show that to do an extremely well designed building that takes into account all the things that allow it to function perfectly but also creates a really beautiful environment for all of those people to be in is of course going to impact how people use it in the end and how they feel about using it and the effectiveness of the way that they use it. And so it, it hopefully amplifies their ability to do the job that they're doing. Certainly in, when you assume when you go to a hospital you feel like you're going to get better. But in this case in uh, Tugela Ferry, South Africa, patients that went to this hospital got sicker, much sicker. Um, in this hospital in 2005, there was an outbreak of what's called extremely drug-resistant tuberculosis. Um, this extremely drug-resistant strand emerged in this, and every patient that got it died in less than two months. The reason for that is because patients who went into this hospital clearly uh, were waiting in, in settings or, that weren't designed for them to be waiting in. For example, this hallway where patients wait, um, uh, or, or other parts of the hospital which weren't designed to deal with airborne diseases. So this, of course, is a crisis. It's a crisis not only in, uh, in, in medical facilities, but it's really a crisis of design. Part of the expansion is to meet in a much more specific way the needs for maternal care and delivery and infant care. One of the most important kind of manifestations of how buildings can heal in this particular project is how we dealt with um, creating the minimum air changes per hour, um, which are required to be um, 12 air changes per hour by the World Health Organization. And the way that we did that in this hospital was to create these solar chimneys. 
So by building up these chimneys higher above the buildings around it and being able to catch the air going through, and then also they're quite dark and will absorb a lot of light, that heat will also kind of pull the air through the building. And then um, in terms of the experiential aspects that we were trying to improve upon, one is creating really beautiful places for the accompanators or patient helpers to, to live that were much more comfortable than, than what's existing there now. So really nice places to cook, um, places to wash their clothes, places to store things, and showers and bathrooms for, for all the people who were taking care of, you know, whoever it is that came to the hospital for treatment. I think when we come into a meeting, even that meeting with, you know, the initial meeting with the director, it's a kind of open slate. You know, we don't come in with any ideas at all yet about what's going to happen, but really just, you know, a very, very long list of questions. For us, we can only build a very good building if we check in and understand every step of the way that we are understanding the clients the way that they intend for their needs to be understood. And usually that doesn't happen on the first time. And so through immersion and, and having long visits and sometimes, you know, every day for two weeks, every day for a week, it gives us a chance to hear what people are saying in terms of their needs and then try to interpret what that would look like in terms of a space and then take that back and say, is this something that would serve your needs? And that gets you to a level of design that you wouldn't get to if you were just responding only to that first level. So then we get a second version of, of that. And, and often, again, we're trying to imagine things that they wouldn't be able to imagine because they've been working in such kind of impoverished conditions. We have completed all the design and handed over to them everything that they need in order to bid the project to a contractor and get started with construction. Um, on the MOH's side, they, that's the Ministry of Health of Rwanda, are looking for funding to support the project. So they're just trying to find a way to allocate the funds to get this project built. The design in D-Day is proposing uh, innovation and a good solution uh, at a quite fair cost. And so it could really help to reduce child mortality. And so that's my wish that uh, some donors could uh, help the government to realize this dream.